Hey guys, I've got some news for you. This Tuesday, March 14th, 3 p.m. Central, I'm going to be hosting an off-the-record private Q&A exclusively for Blaze TV subscribers. This is your chance to chat with me about anything and everything that's on your mind, and I do mean anything and everything. We won't have any big tech sensors looking over our shoulders, so no topic is off limits. If you're not a Blaze TV subscriber, head on over to blazetv.com slash off the record and sign up today so you can join the conversation. Use promo code off the record. The other Blaze TV hosts and I are going to be doing these live chats on a regular basis. So if you want to have a direct line to me, Chad Prather, and the rest of the crew, be sure to sign up now. Again, the live chat will take place on Tuesday, March 14th, 3 p.m. Central. Head over to blazetv.com slash off the record to subscribe today so you can join us there. We'll see you then. All right, you wild kids, let's get off the rails. It's a Thursday. It's been a great week. Look at me. I'm fully branded here. I got the Chad Prather Show shirt on. That's a throwback right there. I think people can still get that if you go to chadonblaze.com. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's that's old school. That's the, We've had that logo for a long time. You know, we haven't changed our music. You know, I'm not like Sarah who bitches about everything. You know? I mean, Sarah's not happy with her set. She's not happy with her theme music. She's not happy with this picture of herself. She's not here to defend herself. <laughs> uh, I'm not happy with Sarah's theme music either. I think it sucks. But, um, yeah, anyway, I'm the only one around here who just doesn't really complain about anything. Everybody else complains, you know. You got hosts that leave because they go, I never complain. And uh, we've had the same logo, the same music, the same deal. It's okay. I mean, there's other th more important things to worry about in life. Content and, you know, I make sure I'm, I'm good and riled up so I can yell at you guys a lot every day. You know, I want y'all to feel, I want y'all to feel berated. I want you to feel like a little bit, like you just got a little ass chewing, you know. Uh, my philosophy is... You guys may not have the platform to just get on here and just yell at, yell at the world like you want to, right? Just, just scream into the abyss. So I do it for you, and you're welcome. And in, in exchange, all I ask you to do is go to where podcasts are offered and leave a five-star rating and a good review. Uh, we got to pump them numbers up or there'll be no more Chad Prather show. We, we will go out the way we came in uh, with the same logo and same theme music. Yeah. We, we will go out the way we came in. And uh, I do miss the days of back when, way back when, I did a once a week podcast of, you know, doing it, you know, um, just one big long stream of consciousness conversation with whoever the guest was at the time. I missed that. But you know what I don't miss about those days is I made zero dollars doing it. <laughs> Thank you, Blaze. Thank you. Uh, it, they they help help me out a lot. So I am thankful for our sponsors of this show and the folks that just you know the best thing you can do is support those sponsors. Go to their website, check out their products. I don't care if it's you know iTarget Pro or uh, My Patriot Supply or you know Patriot Mobile or you know Bespoke Post Box of Awesome. We've got some new ones that are coming along in the next quarter. You're gonna have Relief Factor. About time Relief Factor, you know, stepped up. Um, we got some superfoods, just some good stuff. There's the stuff that I think you'll like and maybe want to try in your life. So uh, they've done a good job taking care of us. Now, one of the things has also remained the same about this show is um, I've always been right. Like, I just, I just don't miss it too often. Now, people get misguided in uh, maybe it's the makeup or the cowboy hat i never know maybe it was my dress this week but i'm always just always right now it might not be one of those things i play the long game so it might not be one of those things where i say it and next week it comes true uh it might take a couple years so i want to play you guys a little flashback of uh there was a story that came out and uh, my good friend, Lisa Page, she was the guest on the show that day. She was sitting in. There's a story about a guy named Zach. And Zach became the homecoming queen. And uh, it, was a, it was a guy. He was a boy. And he became the homecoming queen. And, and I kind of had my little deal with that. Because once again, 
Females are being abused by biological males and taking away their titles, taking away their privileges, taking away their opportunities, taking away their awards and their rewards, and, and just doing things in the name of femininity that isn't feminine at all. And so I had some things to say about old Zach, um, and uh, this was my prognostication. Play the clip. God in heaven, it pisses me off. It pisses me <laughs> yeah. off. It does. The homecoming queen is Zachary. Look, I don't care if your uh -huh. kid wears Fruit of the Looms or Victoria's Secret. Mm -hmm. I don't care. But stop peddling this stuff out there and saying it's normal. Mm -hmm. It's not normal. And then you say, well, what difference does it make to you? It makes a lot of difference because I know the end result. Mm -hmm. I know the end result. I know where this type of trail leads. I know the conclusion. And you're not going to like it when you get there. So that's why I'm going to keep barking and bitching and being a toxic man and saying how wrong this stuff is because that type of dysphoria leads to things like suicide. Oh, well, first of all, you have to get past my fat Kenny Chesney face right there, the big, the big double chin right there. I've gone through many phases with you guys over the years. Um, and... Uh, but I was ranting and raving, and, and the thing I was talking about is I know how this ends. You keep peddling this stuff out there in the name of ideology, and, and it has disastrous results. Well, I wasn't exactly predicting this particular result, but I want you to now revisit Zachary, who was the homecoming queen, and let's get an update of what's going on in his life. Play the clip. It's Friday, February 17th. I'm 19 years old, and yesterday I found out that I got diagnosed with HIV. I'm not posting this until I feel completely ready because honestly, I'm worried about people looking at me as untouchable, but people keep giving me hugs. It's really sweet. I just feel honestly so gross. I wish I could take like a big needle and drain all the blood out of my body. Even though people keep telling me that I'm gonna get through this, this honestly feels like the end of the world to me. All I can think about is how this disease is forever, and I'm never gonna give you a, I'm never gonna be able to get rid of it. I just feel drained emotionally, physically, everything. I can, like, I was told people with HIV can live up to 70, but I don't even want to live past 20. You might be wondering why I haven't cried this video, and it's because it's inevitable. I cried for 12 hours straight, and it's not going to change anything. I told everyone I flew back to Missouri to mourn the death of my cat, but I just need to be with friends and family right now. HIV positive. So this is a sad story. Um, I didn't want to be right about this. Um, I, I don't want to talk about tragic results happening to a kid, regardless of what narrative or agenda was being pushed at the time. There were a lot of people at fault in that scenario of naming him homecoming queen. Um, but now, just a couple of years later, well, Zach finds out that he's HIV positive. We, we don't want that or wish that on anybody. That's a sad, sad diagnosis. Um, and if you heard what he said, you know, people with HIV positive, they can live past 70. I don't want to live past 20. This is heartbreaking in that it is, um, you embraced something and you were actually encouraged to embrace something, a lifestyle that, that here, here's what happened. Here's what happened. You becoming transgender or trying to do this, that, that's not what, why you got HIV. You were engaged in some activities that led to an HIV positive diagnosis. But what you were told is you can do anything you want to do and get away with it. And you can't. So you want to be a girl, whatever, you can be a girl. You, you want to be all these things. You want to, you want to engage in this practice at some point in time, there are consequences to that. And that's true for anyone, anyone. I don't care if you're gay, straight, bi, trans. I don't care. You get engaged in dangerous activity, and you're told that anything goes. We live in an anything satisfy me society. There's dangerous repercussions to that. We've got another clip of Zach, and I want you to watch this. Play it. It is day 11 of living with HIV, and today I want to pay tribute to all the activists of the past who have made it possible for me to be alive today. First up, a big thank you to Anthony Fauci, who has been the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases since 1984, and who's overseen extensive research regarding HIV and AIDS. Next up, a big thank you to Calivia Carter, a black lesbian activist who in the 1980s gathered women to spread awareness for HIV at a time when no one else wanted to be associated with it. Thank you to Gita Ramji, who in the late 1990s and early 2000s was a leading female activist who instituted a ton of 
of drug tests and HIV research to make sure that specifically women did not get infected with this disease. Not to mention the cultural significance that she had as she brought that research to eastern and southern Africa, a place where the AIDS epidemic was basically overlooked. Lastly, thank you to Liam Winslet, who is a transgender activist who focused her efforts in lower income housing along with sex workers, where it was harder to get the medication and social work that they needed. Obviously, this kid hasn't um, gotten the memo yet on uh, how pushing ideologies can be dangerous. <laughs> uh, he's still doing it. I, I, I mean, a kid probably is unaware that Anthony Fauci literally killed a generation in Africa uh, by pushing HIV and even AIDS on a population. So um, it's a sad story, uh, but I will tell you that uh, be not deceived, uh, whatsoever you sow, that shall you also reap. And you will have those consequences. You, you put you know, corn out there in the field and you will grow corn. Uh, you, you, you sow destruction, you'll reap destruction. You, you, know, you, um, ah, you get the point of where I'm going. That's a sad story. I hate being right, but I was right. I was right. And so people say, oh, Chad, you know, so, so let's talk about some other things that I'm right about. <laughs> and and I, we're not going to play clips or anything like that or show you examples. We could do this. But, but when I say things like um, uh, anything from being a woke company is going to make you go bankrupt and you're going to lose all your customers to saying that you need to get your kids out of public school. And people push back on that. Oh, how you gotta, you got to quit saying that. I'm sick of you saying that. I know you're sick of me saying it. I'm sick of saying it. But I'm also sick of reading and hearing these stories, uh, one of which we'll tell you later on in the program. Uh, you know, all of these things that, uh, you know, the under, undermining the dominant paradigm, you know, trying, trying to subvert the dominant paradigm. We talk about that where, you know, traditions and values and age-old concepts, things that have been tried and true as long as people have been walking the planet. There's a reason why we have survived as a species as long as we have, in spite of our best efforts to kill ourselves. You know, up until the, you know, the early 20th century and uh, late 18th century, I mean, we were, we were kind of, or, or late 19th century, I should say, we, we were kind of subject to the beasts still. Uh, you know, we, we couldn't protect ourselves from natural disasters. We, we couldn't, we had a hard time protecting ourselves from large animals. You know, you, every, every time you walked out of your house, you were sort of subject to the elements there. Uh, but because we, you know, put things in motion that we knew were tried and true and built on those concepts, uh, we de developed machinery and complex machinery and, you know, the things like fire and the wheel and even ammunition and guns and all of these different things, which may ultimately end up being our destruction. But let me just say, uh, there are tried and true things out there that we've built on throughout the generations of human existence that work. When you subvert that dominant paradigm, it will lead to destruction. And it's unfortunate. It is really unfortunate. So when I do a parody spoofing, you know, men trying to be women and, and, and people are Boy, there's some people out there that are pissed off that don't understand satire. That's for sure. Uh, you don't know what it's like to be cramping. and We know. <laughs> the point is that that's, that's what we're poking fun at. Um, you know, it, we're, out there, we're out there trying to remind you of how silly it looks when you subvert the dominant paradigm. And I'm not saying we shouldn't get better. My God, look at that picture of me. From, look at that video of me from two years ago. <laughs> I mean, you know, remind me to never shave my face. I mean, that, that double chin, look at that. It looks like my face has given birth to a whole other face. Look at that thing. Um, boy, I've had my evolutions. I mean, I wasn't going through a divorce or anything at the time. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't having basically all the money that I've ever made taken away from me at that time. Yeah, I know. I can still hear Chris out in the hallway yelling. But you know what? Hey, sometimes we do change, and sometimes that's actually a pretty good, pretty good deal. But it doesn't mean. Listen, I can, as as an example, just to carry this stupid, weak example out a little bit further. I can change and get better and and do things differently, but it doesn't change the fact that I'm still me. 
I'm still me. Foundationally, I'm still me. Uh, I'm not changing the entity and being of who I am. And that's the way we've got to treat society as well. Society, we may be able to do things to make it better, but it doesn't change human nature. It doesn't change our desires. It doesn't change the way that, you know, forever we, how we, how we you know, interacted with each other. We just got to make that better. So anyway. Keep on pulling, keep on pulling the foundations out from underneath it, and you'll keep getting on a micro level. You'll keep getting the the examples like Zach, who continued a lifestyle of doing whatever he wanted to do, and now you see the results from that. All right, thanks to your support, Patriot Mobile has emerged as one of the leaders in the parallel economy, and they got big news. Patriot Mobile now offers service with all three major networks. This means that if you're with the big three and you like uh, their service, but you don't like their values, you can access them through Patriot Mobile. And they got a performance guarantee, so if you're not happy with your coverage, you can switch between the three major carriers for free. Uh, as you know, Patriot Mobile is America's only Christian conservative wireless provider. They offer nationwide coverage on the best 4G and 5G networks, so you get the same great service while supporting a company that fights to preserve your God-given rights and freedoms. So I want you guys to stop supporting companies that don't align with your values. They're 100% U.S.-based customer service team. They are ready to help you make switching easy. Just go to patriotmobile.com slash chat or call them up at 878-PATRIOT. You get free activation today with the offer code CHAD. I spell it Chad. That's patriotmobile.com slash chat or call 878-PATRIOT. And we'll be right back. Oh, Sarah Gonzalez is on the seat. Now on the hot seat. Is it hot? Oh, uh, well, it's a hot seat. Man. Feels room temperature to me. Yeah. Well, get it hot, Sarah. Look at all this advertising of myself I'm doing. You, you really are over the top today. I got Chad Prather show shirt on. I got Chad Prather unapologetic hat on. You, you have you have surpassed the level of tacky. I think with both. It's very tacky. <laughs> very very tacky. And what's funny is people will see clips from this show and they'll comment on that and they won't know that I've already talked about being tacky myself. <laughs> I do these things on purpose just to get people talking. Yes. Get them talking. That, I, I would imagine also going... Uh, barefoot? Sh- oh, no, don't do that. Yeah, don't, no, don't. <sighs> well, I can't put a boot on. There, you do realize there are other types of shoes that exist. Well, I, you do realize I don't live here. I do. And so you did break a sandal the other day. So I don't. Uh, <laughs> I the, the in my tennis shoes there is a problem with those tennis shoes. They have they have developed a stink. Oh to them, no! To the point where it's like I've lice all the, the hell out of them. I, I need to put them in the washing machine. Yeah. But um, I have a lot of shoes, and I don't have any with me. So I need to throw those in the trash, and just go get some more shoes. <laughs> just get some more shoes. Well, you could wash them and just see. I, yeah, I could. I mean, they're, they're expensive shoes. They're That's why shoes, I, yeah. I would advise washing them first before yeah, you throw them away. We'll give it a shot. But I'm, I'm, I'm on the road now, so I'm I know. gone all You're weekend busy. long. You're a big rock star. We got it. Hey, let me tell you. Okay. It, it, I'll tell you about a big rock star. I'll tell you about a big rock star. Uh, I had dinner the other night standing up. It was a BLT sandwich from across the street before I got all, went on stage and did a show. Um, you know, we're doing Baton Rouge uh, tonight, actually. Baton Rouge, we're doing um, uh, Tacoa, no, Tifton, Georgia, Nashville, Georgia on Friday. We're doing Tacoa, Georgia. And then when I'm done with that, we get to drive in my truck, three grown men, 13 hours all the way back on Sunday to come back here to, I don't know, sleep in a hotel somewhere. I stayed in a hotel last night that was, it was like, it smelled like Pakistani cologne. I don't know how to tell you any different. <laughs> It just smelled like Pakistani cologne. I've never smelled that, and somehow I immediately you know, know what you mean. Yeah, it's a mix between a polo and curry. <laughs> and you just know that smell. I've been to Pakistan. I know the smells. Ugh. And it literally smelled like a Pakistani cologne. <laughs> it may be because there were a lot of Pakistanis in there. Mm. But uh, uh, then I'll jump in a hotel, and people are like, why don't you stay in a nicer place? I stay in a lot of hotels. I, I'm... I'm I'm cost conscious, conscious sometimes. Mm. Uh, lost all my money in the divorce. The uh, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, uh, everything oh. was sold out last night, Sarah. <laughs> this is my this is my therapy time. Now that you're on the couch, I'm talking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, I'll jump in a hotel and then I'll be Monday morning. I'll be right back in here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Be in the studio, 
And then, then I got to go down the Texas Hill Country Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening. I'm going to try to take a couple of days and decompress mm-hmm. down there on the river. And we we'll still will not go home until I'll come back up here. So I, I will have, by the end of March, I will have spent two whole nights in my bed at home. Wow. So it's the life I choose. I'm not asking for sympathy. It's the life I choose. But, um, yeah, it's, it's a lot. People, people don't want to do it. You don't want to do it. You don't want to do oh, it. Oh, yeah, it does. I mean, they don't realize it's not as glamorous as... This time of year, though, March and April, typically, you, one of those months is always the worst. Every year. It's just like everything is stacked all on top of each other. Now, I could go home. I'm, I'm going to go down to the river. I'm going to take a little mini vacation mm-hmm. next week. And <laughs> CJ's like, well, we could just go back to the house. I'm like, you could go back to the house. I'm going on vacation. I'm taking a couple of days, decompress. What part are you going to? I'm not telling people. Oh, okay. You literally the other week told people exactly where you go to church and where you sit. And now you don't want to tell people the general area in which you're going to, to vacation on the river. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. But here's the thing. <laughs> people can come to my church and get, you know, who knows that that'd be great. They come to my church. That's a great way to get people in there. Right. I'm around a lot of people. What I don't want them doing is showing up in my wilderness retreat. I didn't ask for the address. Yeah. I just wondered. God. No, we have a cabin at Camp Thimpho. Camp Thimpho is amazing down in the Texas Hill Country. And uh, yeah, so you got a cabin down there. It's Again, so, I didn't ask for that information. It's, I just I'm telling wanted you, I'm the just general saying, And I'm saying it's, it's at 773 Thimpho Drive. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not. But it's, I know it's definitely not true because I made it up. But... Um, <laughs> yeah I, it's just you know I was just asking because we were just talking the other day um, Stephen and I about how much we miss going to that area to Fredericksburg in particular go to Camp Fimfo okay F-I-M-F-O F-I-M-F-O that was a, that was CJ's parents gave us a Christmas present well the whole family got a Christmas present a cabin at Camp Fimfo for the month, month of March mm. so okay great gift yeah that's cool I think they're staying down there pretty much the whole month Wow. They better not be down there when I'm down there those couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> Big Mike might have to talk to old Chad. You know what I'm talking about? He's going to be partying at the... <laughs> Kidding. We go to church. We believe in, we believe in the Lord um, and all of, all of his mandates. What are you giggling about? I heard Kayla giggle over there, too. You're just, Y'all can judge me all you're you want. You're a trip. Let me tell you who's a trip. Okay. Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren's a trip. Yes. Now, she's back in the news talking about, oh, what could she be talking about? Could she be talking about the overspending of the American government? No. Could she be talking about the war in Ukraine? No. Could she be talking about January 6th? No. No, they want, they want to know about changing the flag <laughs> in Massachusetts mm. because there's not enough shit to be offended mm. by these days. So they had to call on Senator Foca Honky and get her opinion on the Massachusetts flag because it depicts, uh, well, what could it depict? Oh, white supremacy, Oh, white supremacy. No. So if those of you who can't see the flag there, uh, that is a native American holding a big bow there and, um, can't do that. You cannot have native Americans on anything, nothing. In fact, they, we should not talk about them ever. They should have no part in popular culture. <laughs> They should have nothing to do with history. They should just be, just be, just live on the reservation, drink your fire water and be. It it just is so bizarre to watch them literally whitewash society. Yeah. While claim that they are the one for minorities. Yeah. Just, just. <laughs> they want to we, completely erase like, them from like any it, sort of cultural or societal. <laughs> if that was a white conquistador. Right. They would have no problem with this flag, but it's a Native American. How dare we celebrate anything? Um, of course, it has the, uh, you know, it's, it's surrounded. Well, you know, one of the persons said, uh, ask her, the reporter asked her, said, do you believe that the flag has any racist undertones? It's inappropriate. It's improper. Mm. Um, the senator told the outlet, there are people who are reconsidering the flag in Massachusetts, and I support those efforts. If they told you to piss up a tree, 
because it would make a person of color happy. You would do everything you could to scoot your ass up the bark. I don't even think that's it. It's 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 not the people of color who are ever like who ever have a problem with this. I guarantee you that if <laughs> if you go to where there are populations of Native Americans right. in America today, they don't know what the Massachusetts flag has on it. Well, I mean, it's also they didn't care when the team called the Washington, whatever the hell they're called now, was called the Redskins. Like, yeah, they didn't. The, yeah, the, they didn't care. The <laughs> commando is something much different than commander. Yeah. Chris. Um, they didn't care. It was never them that had a problem with it. Black people didn't care that Aunt Jemima was like a very popular pancake mix. They didn't care. It's never the actual culture that cares. It's yeah. always these dumb white women who think that they are so superior to these black people and these Native Americans that they have to tell them why they're oppressed mm. and tell them how society is out to get them. Yeah. Well. I, I, can't th I can't think of anything more like blatantly racist. Well, the label on the Massachusetts flag, Inse Pettit Placidum Sub Libertate Quietum, which translates to, she seeks by the sword a quiet place under liberty. So they took issue with that, too. She seeks by the sword a quiet place under liberty. You, you know why they have why? a problem with that? Well, because that belt was patterned by the illustrator after the red flannel belt of Wampanoag, leader of Metacomet, who was the leader of the first native war of resistance against English colonization. His severed head was impaled on a pike and displayed in Plymouth for more than 20 years as a war trophy. Uh, that's just part of the depiction. One of the uh, activists claimed that white supremacy but, culture has really allowed for the disappearance of the Native American world. Okay, well, then let's just well, take them off the flag. <laughs> so in other words, she seeks by the sword a quiet place under liberty. So in other words, they had to use the sword to drive out Native Americans so they could have a quiet place under liberty. Oh my God. Now, see, when I first said that, you didn't understand no. why that's racist. No, not so at all. So I have to explain all of that well, you, to you. I mean, you. you have to really reach to make that I, connection. I mean, they put a... a random very little known person from history mm -hmm. of native american descent whose head was impaled as a spoil of war and they kept i mean listen hardcore man they kept it on the stick for 20 years bro <laughs> i mean he might have a freaking problem with it <laughs> but he's not around to be asked mm -hmm. you know what i mean but uh thank god you know warren who took that 2018 uh mm -hmm. dna test she she is native american she is one and two one thousand twenty fourth native american mm. uh so mm. folk a honky maybe she'll run for president again exciting stuff. i'd love to see it <laughs> would you i really would actually oh, boy. you know how much we're gonna have to suffer watching all of these people you know want to kill each other in the primaries i just i just want the same for them I'd like to see him debate Joe Biden now, <laughs> yeah. like call him on the carpet now, yeah. like when Kamala Harris called him a racist who was for, you know, right. Like, I, I would love to. I want to see that now. Yeah. All right. Public service announcement. Manscaped. Uh, I know you think you know what I'm about to say about Manscaped. They now have beard products and they're going even further with their brand new Weed Whacker 2.0. So tell the world the leaders uh, in the below the waist grooming are traveling north of your South Pole with the revolutionary grooming products, the new Weed Whacker 2.0. Was that, yeah? Uh, yeah. All right. And they work, I'm and, told. No, they work. Uh, they do. I have a couple of them now. <laughs> yeah. My um, sometimes, does too. sometimes I get the weed whacking down there and I the battery runs right out because wow. I've just been down there for Is hours. Is a forest or what? I'm meticulous. My gosh. Uh, but their new beard line, which I got recently, uh, they they got the best tools for your you know for what you need. Uh, it's time for you to upgrade your game by going to manscaped.com and using our code Chad C H A D S spell it Chad for twenty percent off. Plus, you get the free shipping. Now that you have your face looking great, you must try uh, Manscaped's Performance Package 4.0 for the full body grooming experience. Uh, the Performance Package 4.0 now comes with the Weed Whacker 2.0 and all of the other below-the-waist grooming products Manscaped is known for. Your significant other would be delighted to see you covering all bases, if you know what I mean. So... Get 20% off and free shipping with our code chat at manscaped.com. You didn't know about the basis. That's like talking about third base. Okay. <laughs> uh, use promo code chat at manscaped.com. 20% off free shipping. Manscaped.com. Use promo code chat. Always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Be right back.
All right, guys. Um, time of the show where I'm going to wax eloquent, Sarah. All right. Yeah. I can't wait to hear you. You've try. seen Titanic, haven't you? Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know what happens like when it hits that iceberg and it's that, 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 that right down the side? Yes. It'd be a scary feeling. You know, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I would imagine yeah. uh, drowning in the ocean while you're freezing yeah. to death might well, the, be a the little. Problem wasn't that the, the problem wasn't the glacier that was sticking out of the water. It was under the water. Mm -hmm. So when the Titanic got hit, da, 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 it, it was like Morse code down the side of the boat. Right. Under the water. So, I mean, you know, you're just out there minding your own business. And then all of a sudden, boom, you hit an iceberg and it, uh, it just tears your boat up. And uh, there's a um, climate change, a whole lot more uh, climate change. <laughs> there's a whole lot more to that iceberg with what you can't see than what you can see. And I want to use that as an example because I want to talk about the state of creeping mordant evil in the vast ocean of our American public education system. So there is a story coming out of the Poudre School District in Fort Collins, Colorado. I probably slaughtered that word, but you'll forgive me. But uh, there in Fort Collins, Colorado, teachers conspired via email to circumvent the wishes of parents who had requested that their kids not be referred to by their preferred pronouns, but rather by the names which they were given at birth by, you know, those parents who gave them to them. Now, the emails traded back and forth among faculty had to do with trying to parse out whether teachers should respect the will of the students or the will of the parents and what legal ramifications there might be for this. Folks, I don't even need to go further into the details of this story for both you and I to know how to paint this mural across the canvas of our minds. And as always, my solution remains the same. You know what it's going to be. You know what I'm going to say, right? It's time to get your kids out of public schools. How many examples can I give you? The building is on fire, folks. There's no way to save it at this point. We just have to let it burn down, collect the insurance money, and rebuild it using a better construction crew next time. But here's what I want you to take away from this particular story and from stories like it that we see on an increasingly regular basis. You know that thing I said earlier about the iceberg, talking about the Titanic? It's true with crap like this as well. That is to say, when you witness things like this, which squeak past the gatekeepers and somehow make it out into the public's awareness, understand that you're only seeing what they got caught doing. If you take nothing else away from what I'm saying here, take that. When we've gotten to a point in this country where a kid's desire to fit in with what surely is largely a fad at this point, where that desire outweighs the mandate of the people who brought those kids into this world, you can be absolutely certain that there's a whole unseen kettle of fish just boiling beneath the surface of anything that slips out. Folks, it's not merely that the building is on fire. All the wood that the building was made of is rotted, and it's filled with termites, and those termites have herpes, the really bad kind. I mean, like, incessantly bad. And not that there are no good people in the education system. That should go without saying. If anything, it makes the whole matter even sadder to realize that there really are a lot of great teachers and faculty members sprinkled throughout the shit show, people who really do care about your kids and want what's best for them, people who would understand that they need to look to you, the parent, for guidance on what to do when your kid wants to go by different pronouns and those few that increasing minority of forces for good in the world of education those are the people we should shepherd into the new world of revitalized education when we rebuild out of the ashes they can come and join us in the meantime get your kids out of the school system folks your only regret will be waiting so long i've told y'all i'm always right i'm always right i'm always right did you see the video, Sarah, of that school superintendent? He mm, caught some no. he caught some crap. Uh, we have that clip. The superintendent. I think we do have that thing somewhere in there. I thought I saw it on our list here. Well, the, we'll just wait. Well, we'll just wait. We'll just hang out. Yeah. Uh, Hello, anyway. producers. Are you over there? Yeah, I thought we might have it. Play it. Oh. Wow. Here we go. <laughs> what do you want the parent to say to the kid? Get it together. You know, we're here for one primary reason, which is to get an education, uh, have a positive outcome in your life, and to not have a negative outcome. And we need our parents to be supportive. Get involved. Get involved in your home and school. Support your administration. Get to know your teaching staff. And become a united front that we are not going to uh, conduct ourselves this way in our schools, in our communities, our businesses. And our communities have reached out. Any negative response like, oh, you're putting it back on us? Yes, Why yes, sure. I've, I've received that. I've also received communications from principals from around the country uh, who have reached out of my letter saying, thank you. We wish that a communication would have come out 
from our area because we are exhausted and we want people to know we need their help. Yeah. This, is, this is causing people to leave the profession. What do you want the parent to say to the kid? Get it together. Yeah. Get it together. Mm-hmm. Let the parents be the parents. Mm-hmm. I mean, God forbid you go to a school board meeting and try to speak up about stuff like pornography in the libraries. You, and you might, might get, get arrested. Yeah, you, you never might know. get put on the FBI's domestic yeah. terrorist list. I mean, you might, you know, Merrick Garland might call you a domestic <laughs> terrorist, you know, one of these crazed, unhinged parents. Uh, I had to burp. But uh, now you know it. I could have hidden that. I didn't want to. Yeah, I, you really didn't have to tell people. No, I want people to know. Okay. I want people to know how real I am. I'm human. I bleed. Um, he poops some, too. Sometimes I cry. Sometimes Mostly I cry. But I, kudos to the school superintendent who says we want the parents to be back involved. We want you to get involved. See, I don't know. Uh, these days, these That's days, sad. see, these educators, quote unquote, they don't want you involved. Right. They want you anything but involved. They want to run their little camp. Well, but they, I mean, but uh, which came first, the chicken or the egg, right? Because I would also argue that parents got too comfortable dropping their kids off in an indoctrination camp that it wasn't originally, but they they weren't involved. They used the school system as a babysitter so that they could go to work and they weren't involved. So then teachers saw or activists saw, hey, if we can just infiltrate into the education system, we can be the ones, you know, molding these children because the parents aren't freaking paying attention you want me to say something very provocative yeah. that will make people mad of course you value your second income more than your children yes you you can come up with all the excuses that you want i told you on the show this week i, I lived for years we homeschooled our children i made thirty thousand dollars a year single income family mm-hmm. we we cut everything we could i mean we were just short of living in a wilderness i drove i sent you a picture I, sh- I wish I had it. I wish I'm, I can't do it because other people live in this house now, but I wish I could oh, yeah. show you guys. I sent you a picture. I yeah. was, I was, I showed you a picture of a house when my children were very small. I showed you the house I lived mm-hmm. in. Um, it was a shack. They, I was going to say the house was very small as well as your children. Yes. Yeah. It, it, was, it was very small. It was, it was. I could not see Chad Prather now yeah. living in that and tiny little what's shack. funny we thought when we drove past that house um it was in fort Payne, alabama we we were virtually homeless mm-hmm. we'd been kicked out of our house and uh, we were living with my in-laws for a period of about three months you know crammed up in a small bedroom in there uh and graciously they they let us stay there for three months kids were little very little and we were driving through fort Payne, alabama and we drove past this house up in the up in the up in the hills there and we saw this little house and we were like that's we're that's our house we're supposed to be in this house wow and i said there's no way we can buy this house we can't buy this house i said this house would be like have to be like forty thousand dollars for us to be able to go buy this house forty thousand dollar house a forty thousand dollar house imagine that these days and and uh she said my wife at the time she said she said let's go find out and we drove down to the realtor's office and she said, uh, it's 49,000 and we bought it. Wow. A $49,000 house. Um, and it was, we you loved ba- that You house. can barely buy a car for $49,000 today. We loved that house. It was, uh, it, it had a basement. It was bigger than you thought from based on what you could mm. see. It had room, but it was built in 1928. Wow. And uh, it had a lot of character to it, but it, the character was all on the inside. Trust me. <laughs> trust me when I tell it you. It makes sense. Uh, we had to completely tear everything down on the inside. So whoever's living there now, uh, you're welcome. I mean, we wow. had to completely demolish everything because it was all, it was gutted. 1928. Built in 1928. Yeah. But that was, that's, that was the stuff we did, though. Mm-hmm. That's the stuff we did until um, our kids were you know, older. Yeah. I mean, again, I've got a, I've got a child prodigy. My youngest son is a child prodigy. He's in college. I have to, we couldn't keep homeschooling him. He's too smart. Right. (laughs) He's too smart for the educators now. Yeah. I was talking to him on the phone last week. I was like, he's got a, he's in college. He's got, he had a, he had a math competition. It was all day deal. They won't even find out the results till April. And I'm like, just, are you going to, are you going to win this thing? He goes, that's no problem. I'm like, (laughs) I did for him, it's not a problem, but it's like, you know, but we sacrificed yeah. rather than put those kids in school. So I, I promise you, I've put my money literally where my mouth is on mm-hmm. this thing. Mm-hmm. And I'll put my kids up against anybody in that regard. Mm-hmm. They're not perfect. No, but, no one's. But I put are. my kids up. It's some of the best society has to offer. Yeah.
I put your kids up as some of the best society. Are, as are. The one never sleeps, which right. is problematic. Yeah. A but they're bit. great kids. Smart yeah. kids. Yeah. Once he uh, gets out of that toddler phase of, you He's know. been in that toddler phase for five and, years. Yeah, hitting and. <laughs> hey, not the older one. Not that one. I'm talking about the little one. Yeah, it feels this like feels five like years. Five years Ooh, yeah. Cause man. Because normally you sleep a third of your life. And, uh, oh, it, not him not and not that us, that consequently. You've, seen, you've literally experienced the world over the last three years. <laughs> yeah. uh, you haven't been able to sleep through any of it. Nope. So anyway, <laughs> uh, guys, I'm just telling you because I care. All right, hang tight. We'll be right back. I'm not real good with keeping up with uh, Disney programming or the Nickelodeon Kids Choice Awards on Saturday. Uh, I would imagine I don't, I you would don't not be. see a lot of that stuff. Uh huh. Um, but I know it exists. And uh, one of their Disney's stars, Joshua Bassett, uh, he had an acceptance speech during the, the Nickelodeon Kids Choice Awards. And, you know, hey, it's a little, little good news, a little positive message that you wouldn't expect out of, quote, Hollywood. Uh, play, play that first clip. I grew up Christian and I ran the other way as far as I could go in pursuit of truth. And that only ended in uh, addiction, depression, uh, suicidal ideation, eating disorders, etc. And no other teacher gave me anywhere near the peace that Jesus Christ did. That's right. That's right. And, and I'm here to publicly declare him as my Lord and Savior. That's right. Now, you go back to that first clip we were talking about in the first segment, you know, with Zach. Homecoming, the homecoming queen who now has HIV. Um, and the, you, the, the testimony of so many people throughout history is just exactly that. I ran toward, you know, I, you run towards a lot of things. I used to say there's no reality in the bottom of a bottle. You know, if you, if, I'm not saying don't drink alcohol. I'm just saying that if you're trying to find reality there by getting drunk and burying your stuff in drugs and all this kind of stuff or in sex and lust, all this kind of stuff, obviously this kid found that out. But uh, here, here was, uh, play that second clip. And I'd love to thank my savior, Jesus Christ. I wanna say something. There are a lot of people here who are burdened, brokenhearted, and have been beaten down by life. And I'm here to tell you, for those of you who have lost hope, there is a very real God who loves you more than you will ever possibly know, okay? His promise is peace, and my testimony is my healing. Remember, forgive quickly, love freely, and walk courageously. Love always wins in the end. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Mwah. Wow. Yeah, that's great. I, you know, I, I, it's a good message. I think that um, I try to listen to the nuances of what somebody's saying, because sometimes you can see if somebody's just kind of in a faddish way saying certain words or whatever, if, or if it's a true conviction. You can't read somebody's heart, but you know, like, he's obviously, he's... He's rehearsed those truths mm -hmm. in his life. So that's good. It's good. It's a positive thing. Who is this? Uh, Josh Bassett. He's on uh, Disney's um, High School Musical. Oh. The series. Okay. Yeah. okay. High School Musical, the series. Good for him. Yeah, it's good for him. I mean, it, listen, I don't care I mean, what you say. It's some boldness. Well, I mean, he's, he's going to get canceled tomorrow, well, but yeah. good for him. I mean, here's the, the you know, the <laughs> teens that are out there in the audience, they're going to scream for whatever right. their people say. Right. Just right. like Chris Pratt got up there with basically the same <sighs> message and all, everybody in the audience is just going, yeah. And yeah. then, of course, it's the it's the re -re's afterwards. Yeah. They come after you. It's true. I do cheer for anything that Chris Pratt says. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> you don't even know what Chris Pratt says. No, just, I just I just immediately love it. Yeah. This is I'm Chris Pratt's my inspiration. I I just know that if I could lose 20 pounds and add some muscle that I, I you know, you I, could, I, too, I too could have a transformation because <laughs> he's not the same person he was on Parks no, and Recreation. So no. This shows you. Yeah. Shows you what making a lot of money and hiring a personal trainer and a chef and all that stuff can do. Yeah. You're mm. not ugly. You're just poor. <laughs> I keep trying to tell people this. It's very true. <laughs> I know. It's very, very true. There is something <laughs> to be said for all of that. Um, just, just look at me two years ago from that clip that we showed you in the A block. I mean, look how horrible I looked in the middle of uh, giving mm -hmm. all my money away in a divorce. Mm -hmm. And look at me. Oh, my God. Look at that. Jabba. Wow. Jabba the Hutt. I did not realize well, that you looked like shit back then. I looked bad. <laughs> I looked bad. 
But now I'm an, now I'm an elegant, beautiful woman. <laughs> you you yeah. are selling feminine Ch- products. Chadpads.com. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, and back then, wow. you probably didn't think I looked like shit. Was, I didn't. Because I'm so charismatic and charming yeah. in real life. That's the difference. <laughs> you, ma- you mask it? <laughs> well, the, 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 television, the, the television camera doesn't do a lot of No, favors. it doesn't. It doesn't. If, if you have anything going on that's, that's kind of, you know, a flaw, it will pick up on it. It's yeah. going to. Yeah. It's it, going to make you look fatter than you are. Yes. Drives me crazy that Brandon and them, they do these reels for all the stuff and that thing just by natural, it stretches it out a little bit. Yeah. And I'm like, guys, can we just, you know. Just, just, cl- just crop it. Don't stretch it. Yeah. Cause it's, it, it, the program naturally stretches you out a little bit. Yeah. That's what I'm going with. It is the freaking program, people. <laughs> It's not me. It's not my unhealthy lifestyle. Uh, it's the program. Listen, I battle with it. Last two months have been rough. You know this. I do the keto. I've been mm-hmm. back on the keto. I'm intermittent fasting, which mm-hmm. is hard for me. I don't eat anything before noon. I don't eat anything after 8 p.m. That so, is really hard. And so 16 hours of, and uh, and I'm very low. I'm not keto, but I'm low carb, very low carb. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying. I'm trying. And I love breakfast. Very hard for me not to eat before noon. Eat breakfast at noon. Eat brunch. Well, I want it when I wake up. Yeah, I know. I wake up at four. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, trust me, I know. <laughs> I know. You did, but you don't. Not you're not being serious. No one wants breakfast at four a.m. No, I don't want. I don't want it. Maybe seven. And and here's the deal. I don't just want breakfast. I want it with a biscuit. Oh. And grits. No, sir. Mm-mm. I can't have it. Nope. You know, grits are my downfall. I love grits. Grits. I are love good. grits. Like there's only when I'm not when I'm not eating carbs. That's the one thing I want is grits. Really? Yeah. That okay. Yeah. That's a little weird. Yeah. I'm not a bread eater. You I'm, just said I, you wanted a biscuit. I do at breakfast. <laughs> well, I want there and I want bread. a piece of fried chicken on it with egg and cheese. Oh my gosh. I do. Uh, Chick Fil A, chicken, egg, and cheese biscuits. You need to go ba-bow, through ba-bow. the 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 detox time period again, where you just stop missing it so much. I did that. Okay. I did yeah, that. you stop missing it after the first couple really, of weeks. Really, we're going to take health advice from Chris Cruz? <laughs> he's, he's, I was a eating a rabbit. He's a work in I was eating a rabbit. No, I'm just, you know, it's a battle. It's a constant battle for yeah. me. And I see myself two years ago. Even though my brain was sharp and I was still predicting the future back then, mm. always, always right, Sarah. Where can people email you? Oh, uh, they can email me at, we're taking, I'm doing life advice now, like Dear Abby, because who wants to hear from Dear Abby? Whose idea was this? Me. me, literally okay. me. I was reading a Dear Abby column and I was like, I can respond to this. I have answers for you. Yeah. So we're going to do it on the show. You can email uh, dearsarah at theblaze.com. Give me your, uh, come, come to me for dating advice, life advice, mothering advice, you know, whatever, whatever you got, hit me with it. I love that graphic. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not. I do not have time to email you back. And by the way, stop sending me messages on Facebook Messenger. I don't oh, see them. Yes, and I'm talking to people like Party File Steve. Dude, you got my number. Just text me. <laughs> Why are you sending so, me a Facebook message, so bro? <laughs> Hang tight. We'll be right back. We love you guys. We do appreciate you, Sarah. Uh, of course, you can find her at Ask Sarah. Dear Sarah at the Dear blaze. Sarah. By the way, I'm not writing them back. I'm I'm reading their on the deal yeah, on yeah. the show on and the show. answering them. It. It's awesome. Yeah. I need we'll an email address. I, maybe I need an email address. But no dick pics though. Nobody please. wants to. Nobody wants to take me seriously. Anyway, take me seriously when you go to chadpratherlive.com and also see me on the road and blazetv.com slash chad. Use promo code chad. Find us uh, on overtime tomorrow with uh, special guest Ezra Levant. We'll see you next week. Love you. Bye.